This morning, while I was out rowing on the or patio here in Florida, good day for rowing, the temperature was under 90 for once, it suddenly hit me. I had one of those moments like St. Paul on the road to Damascus. During breakfast, I had read a story about Portland and how Mayor uh, Ted Wheeler had restricted the use by the police of tear gas. And I thought, what a lame ass. I mean, how are the police supposed to handle these peaceful protests? And then it suddenly struck me. The progressive use and the media's use of the term peaceful protests was the answer to my question. Let me explain. First, a little background on Mayor Ted Soyboy Wheeler. You know, one of the big problems I think this guy has, well, he's got lots of problems. One of them is he's trying to do two jobs. If you may not know it, but the mayor of Portland doubles as the police commissioner. Now, he has a chief to help him, a new chief who was just appointed. But basically, Wheeler's doing two jobs. And quite frankly, it looks like Wheeler can't even do one very well. The odds of him doing two very well are next to none. I mean, it's just not going to work. And we can see that in how he's handled this thing. You know, he keeps trying to de-escalate. Remember when he went out earlier and he marched with the the uh, the uh, protesters, the mostly peaceful protesters? Actually, he got tear gassed. But you have to understand, he was standing across from the police and he's technically, in Portland, the commissioner of the police. So there was the police commissioner on the other side of a protest with the protesters who are yelling, you know, at the police and stuff like that. That must be a real morale builder for the police force in Portland. And then he got the uh, help get the feds out of the courthouse because he thought that would work. And the state police took over responsibility for defending that. And it was quiet for about one night. But then the next thing we know, there were the protesters again moving around different parts of the city. They went up to the northern part of Portland and then east and then some of the other areas and eventually into residential areas. That didn't work out very well, hoping to get them to back off by backing off himself. They just kept escalating. And then they went after his house. They went after his condo, the building where his condo is located. And what was his response to that? He moved. He left. He fled. He basically got out of Dodge. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in Portland who would like to be able to move too, but they can't. But he can. He's well off. So he moved, and that's going to de-escalate things, but it didn't. The protesters just went somewhere else and caused more problems. So now he thinks by de-escalating with the police and not letting them use tear gas, that's going to help quiet down the city. Doesn't this guy ever learn? And then the answer is no. And why doesn't he learn? Because he's a progressive. Progressives, as I point out all the time in social media, always double down. They never admit their policies are wrong. They just need to do them more diligently. They need to spend more money. They need to work harder. They need to bend over backwards even further than they're bending over at the time. It won't work. But what would work? What should they be doing? And that's the revelation I had. What should they be doing? The key is the term peaceful protests. Now, we know what the protests really look like. We know they involve rioting, looting, and arson. Nevertheless, there are peaceful protests, or sometimes mostly peaceful protests. We've all seen the images of the reporter talking about peaceful protests while behind him buildings and city blocks burn. We've all seen that. We know how it works. But that's the key. The key is to turn this use of language by progressives against them and use it ourselves in terms of police tactics. Now, we've all seen these peaceful protesters throwing Molotov cocktails at the police. Sometimes, of course, their aim's not good. And the other night, they hit one of their own protesters who did a little uh, dance as his legs burned. Poor guy. But it's the price of being a peaceful protester, I guess. You stand a chance of getting burned alive. But if using Molotov cocktails in a peaceful protest is okay, if it's something progressives 
approve of, if it's something progressives look the other way about, if it's something the media will cover for, then I think it's only fair that the police can use the same tactic. You might call it mostly peaceful police action using Molotov cocktails. Why can't the police arm themselves with Molotov cocktails and throw them at the protesters? I don't mean throw the ones the protesters throw them back. I mean carry their own Molotov cocktails. How long would these protests go on if the police had a bin of Molotov cocktails at the ready and the first incendiary that the protesters sent toward the police, be it a Molotov or a rocket or some sort of fiery bomb, the police responded by throwing Molotov cocktails back. Now, you might say that that's overreaction by the police, but it would be mostly peaceful overreaction. After all, if you can use a Molotov cocktail in a peaceful protest, you should be able to use a Molotov cocktail in mostly peaceful police response. Seems fair to me. Another tactic they could use, used by the protesters in these peaceful protests, spitting. We've all seen pictures of protesters, be them BLM, Antifa, whichever group they're from, spitting on the police. So why can't the police use the same tactic? If spitting on police is a mostly peaceful activity, then spitting by the police should also be a mostly peaceful police action. So I think the police should be able to do is to spit back at the protesters. So when these protesters get into the face of the cops and they start spitting or yelling at them, the police should be allowed to spit back. Just put a big lunker on the protester. Seems fair to me. Hate speech. We've all seen images and heard the audio of protesters getting in the face of cops, especially black cops, and using, well, phrases and words that I can't repeat on YouTube, or they'd probably uh, pull this video off or maybe ban me entirely. You know the words I'm talking about. I don't need to spell them out for you. But if that's part of a peaceful protest, then why can't the police use comparable peaceful police re responses? Why can't the police also hurl racial and gender epithets at the protesters? So a, a guy gets in, a protester gets in the face of a policeman, and maybe it's a, uh, a, a female protester, and she starts calling the black cop the word that I can't use. And the black cop responds by calling her a, another word I can't use on YouTube without getting blocked. I think you can imagine what the word would be. That seems fair to me. Another tactic these mostly peaceful protesters use is to go into residential areas or where officials live and make a lot of noise at night, shining lights into their bedroom, darkened bedrooms so that they can't sleep, making a racket, using bullhorns, everything to prevent them from sleeping during the night, making them feel threatened in their homes, possibility of maybe they're going to break in, maybe they're going to, uh, you know, damage our cars, kill our pets, whatever they might do, put fear into the hearts of citizenry. Why can't the police do the same? I mean, these protesters are out every night. They have to sleep. They must sleep somewhere. And my guess is the police know where they sleep. They probably got warehouses that people have uh, purchased or, or leased for them to go and sleep during the day so they can get something to eat, you know, wash up, use a toilet, make some food, and sleep. They have sleeping bags or whatever, or maybe there's place, other places they're staying, maybe tent encampments. I've seen some of these in the cities. The police know where they are. Why don't the police use the same tactics? The police should go to these, say, a tent encampment, during the day when these guys are trying to sleep and make a lot of noise. Go in with bullhorns, play country music, sing uh, uh, patriotic songs, go through, disturb them, make sure they can't sleep all day. After all, the police on the day shift don't have to worry about the night shift. The night shift will take care of a night shift. So the daytime police can go and upset these people, keep them awake, make sure that they're tired the next night so they're not as perky when they get out there on the streets. Maybe if they didn't get to sleep all day, it would bring an end to what they're doing at night or at least curtail it a bit. Seems fair to me. Another favorite tactic of these peaceful protesters is to lob hard objects at the police. These could be rocks. 
These could be bricks. We've seen that. Uh, frozen water bottles is another one of their favorites. And they lob them when the police get together to prevent them from moving into an area. They lob these projectiles at them. And in some cases, they hit the police. I mean, nobody really likes to get hit in the head by a brick. Uh, if you've ever been hit in the head by a big rock, and I have, you know, it, it's not a pleasant experience. Why can't the police use these same tactics? What if they filled out the police line and behind them they had pallets lined up with bricks, just like the pallets that unknown people drop off with the protesters at these protesters on some occasion, and frozen bottles of, of water. And when the rioters come toward them trying to break through the police line, they throw the bricks, they throw rocks, and they throw the frozen water bottles at the protesters. I mean, after all, if that's part of a peaceful protest, it should also be part of a peaceful police action. Seems fair to me. Now, you might say, you know, these are pretty harsh tactics for the police to use. But that's taken care of. Progressives have labeled these tactics peaceful. These are tactics used night in and night out in Portland and other cities. And progressives and the American media term these tactics peaceful. Peaceful. So why can't the police use these peaceful tactics? The progressives have already done the police the favor of labeling these tactics as peaceful. So it's only fair that the police should be able to employ them themselves. If you spit at me, I can spit at you. If you call me a name, a hateful name, I can use hateful language against you. If you're going to throw Molotov cocktails at us, we're going to throw Molotov cocktails at you. Now, that may sound like a war, but we don't need to worry about that because the progressives and the media have already told us it's not warfare. It's not violence. It's not rioting. It's not arson. It's not looting. It's peaceful protests. Peaceful protests meet peaceful police action. And if we started seeing peaceful protesters meeting similarly operating peaceful police actions, maybe that would bring an end to what we're seeing on the streets. I'd like to hear what you think. Leave me a comment. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. And as we continue to confront the resistance in our streets, remember what we need to do is to stand fast and keep fighting.